The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. Today's message entitled, You Are a Mountain Destroyer. According to the Word of God, every believer has the capability of destroying and removing mountains. Mark 11, 22 through 24. It's the Word of God. And we're excited to hear the Word of God today. Amen. We ask God for peace in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Mark eleven twenty two, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. That's a command. Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Therefore I say unto you, all things, for which you pray and ask. Believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. He's saying here that everything that you have need of, everything that you approach God about, God is definitely going to give you the answer and he already said yes to all his promises, so you don't have to ask him if it is his will, because he declared that it is his will when he said that in Christ Jesus, all the promises of God are yea in him and amen in him. That's found in 2 Corinthians 1.20. So we're talking about Jesus in verse 23. He's talking about removing mountains, destroying mountains. We will need to understand the meaning of the word mountain before we are able to remove the mountain. There are mountains that we're going to encounter Maybe it's a steep climb. Maybe it's a hardship to rise up to. But we're going to be able to overcome that mountain, whatever the mountain is. Now, let's, so let's study a little bit about the mountain and about mountains. In the book of Revelation, it talks about a woman sitting on seven mountains. Not seven hills, but seven mountains, Revelation chapter 12. <clears throat> and seven mountains are seven kingdoms. According to my understanding of the word. Okay, because they... Uh, interpreters said that this got to be Rome because it's six, uh, it sits on seven hills. But the word is not hills, but mountains. Okay? So it's not Rome. So all the books that you've read, you might as well trash them. If they, if they say that it is Rome, it's not Rome. So in the Old Testament, we observe something unique about mountains. Daniel chapter 2, verse 34 through 35. 
Thou sowest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in pieces. Then was the iron and clay, the brass and silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like a chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a, be, became a great big mountain and filled the whole earth. So mountains are mentioned in Daniel. That stone that was cut out without hands became a great big mountain and covered the earth. And that speaks of a great big mountain destroying the other little mountains. Because the mountain, that, that stone that became a great, great big mountain, covered the whole earth. You couldn't see any little mountains anymore. It was one big mountain. Okay? <clears throat> So the, the big mountain covered the whole earth. It's rulership over the earth. It's destroying all other mountains. And that's none other, that stone that was cut out without hands was none other than King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ, ruling over the whole earth. And it goes along with the revelation that there's going to be a millennium reign and rule of Christ for 1,000 years. A millennium. <coughs> Revelation 11:15. The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So when we speak of mountains, we're speaking of kingdoms. When we have the authority, been given authority to remove mountains, It's got to be a revelation to understand what Jesus is talking about. You have to study the word to get the revelation. <clears throat> we all have the authority and the power to move mountains, to destroy mountains. Mountains that come against us. Circumstances, sickness, disease, financial difficulties. These are mountains that can be removed. As a brother mentioned, God is a God of prosperity. He will prosper his people. He doesn't want you to stay poor. Don't accept poverty. Resist the devil and he will flee. Poverty is of the devil. It's not of God. My father, my God is so rich in his glory and power and gold and silver and everything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Praise God. So let's look at what Jesus did when he was here on earth. As an example, showing his disciples what they can do. Do you know why Jesus walked on the water? So that he will glorify himself and show himself that he could do that? No, 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 absolutely not. He was walking on the water to show the disciples that they can walk on the water. And Peter caught on. The rest of them didn't. They stayed in the boat. But Peter said, 
If it be you, bid me to walk on the water. Bid me come to you. Amen. He caught on. Are we catching on? There's something supernatural for the believer, for the child of God, that we have not even began to use yet. We've got the power. We've got the Holy Ghost. We've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. What are we doing about that? Where's the power? Why do we put up with issues and problems? And why do we go along with the, with the devil's crowds that... Go around and saying, I'm sick and getting sicker and I think I'm going to die. Why do we proclaim the negative words instead of agreeing with the word of God that says that I am walking, I walk in divine health. That my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I'm not going to get poorer. I'm going to get richer. Amen. That's the God we serve. We serve a God that will supply. Abraham was, God was talking about Abraham. He was a very rich man, it says in the scripture, in Genesis. You know what Isaac did? Isaac planted in the year of famine, and he received back 100-fold. Most people in the time of famine don't want to impart with anything. But let me tell you this. If you want things to turn around for you, you've got to sow seed. That means tithe and offering in our language. You know, when Jesus said, give and it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. If we will believe that, we'll be prospering, all of us. But we need to believe it, and we need to declare it, and we need to uh, tithe with the idea of believing God that he is going to turn things around for us and that he will give us back a hundredfold just like he blessed Isaac. Amen. Somebody wants to change your name to Isaac, you begin to do what Isaac did, you will get a hundredfold back. You know, the Bible says, I'll give you a new name. So maybe that's your, your new name. You know what Isaac means? Laughter. Amen? You just go around laughing. You just go around rejoicing. You are a child of God. Why are you so sad? You don't want to be glad to be sad. You know who your God is. You know that you are a child of God. You know who your daddy is. I mean, when I played with the kids in the neighborhood, uh, I used to be proud of my dad. I used to tell the kids, my dad will beat up your dad. <laughs> That's the mentality of a kid. Jesus said, if you want to come in into the kingdom, you have to be like a little kid. So be, have the mentality of a kid. My father is great. No, nobody can, uh, you know, beat him. In anything. He provides, man, he beat up your dad. <laughs> Glory. I mean, you know, uh, when I used to walk to school, uh, to high school, every day, every day, one time, a couple of kids told me they're going to beat me up when I come back from school. And man, I was scared. Wouldn't you be scared if somebody was going to beat you up? Because I, I was not a fighter. I was very timid and stayed away from people, very bashful. And if somebody said hello, I didn't know how to answer them. Uh, and my face will, will turn red. And, you know, I, I didn't know how to handle it, you know. What do you mean, hello? What do I say? Hi? 
good morning, good evening. <laughs> so I didn't know in those days, you know, I, I was timid. So when these kids said they're going to beat me up, I mean, poor me, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I, I wasn't interfering with their business. So uh, I was in school and I looked, I knew this uh, Greek kid that was going to school with me. He was the biggest and the strongest kid around. His name was Alex. And I used to ask him, what does your mother feed you? <laughs> there was a concrete wall. He hit the wall with his head and it cracked the wall. I said, no, no damage to your head? No. I said, Alex, during the break, I said, Alex, would you be my friend? He says, why? Who's threatening to kill you? <laughs> he said, of course I'll be your friend. So I walked past these two kids and they were hiding. They wouldn't come out. I called them, they wouldn't come out. Now Alex became my friend. <laughs> Amen? So your friend is bigger than anything. Your friend is God. And God, if God be for us, who can be against us? Right. Hallelujah. So Jesus showing the disciples in Mark 4, 39 through 40. He arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. What was he doing? He was coming against a mountain. The mountain of tribulation. A storm. It was coming against the disciples, and Jesus was sleeping. They woke him up, and they, they said, don't you care? And he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. And then he turned around to them. So uh, let me read it. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? In, in another version it says, O oh, you of little faith. So we see here Jesus exercising authority and power over the kingdom of Satan. And he expected, he was an example. He was the leader, and the leader teaches the students to do the same. He had disciples, they were students. The word disciple means student, by the way. Disciples are not apostles. Disciples are disciples, students. And he was teaching them how to handle life. He expected the disciples to act the same way. To remove mountains. To stop the mouth of lion, of the lion. To destroy kingdoms. So today he expects you as a believer to know that you have power over the kingdoms of this world. After all, his kingdom is going to expand throughout the whole earth and you are part of his kingdom. For where the king is, that's where the kingdom is. And you represent Jesus. Ephesians 1, 19 through 23. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the, his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. All of these are kingdoms. Power, might, dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet. 
that's under your feet because you're part of him. We're the body of Christ. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So he's the head and we're the body. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 2, 6. And he has raised us up together with him. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we have been seated with him the same way he's seated in heavenly places far above, I believe say far above, all principality, all power, all dominion, all kingdoms, all mountains. We are seated above. He seated us, you don't have to repeat this, he seated us together with him in Christ in the heavenlies. So positionally, we are in heaven. What are we doing there? Sitting down, relaxing, drinking coffee? No. We're seated together with him at the right hand of the majesty on high with power and authority. So that when something is in the way, we can move it out of the way. We are mountain destroyers. Okay? So he has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. This tells us that we have power over the kingdoms of this world and over all demonic powers. We have the power to remove mountains. So three steps we need to take to remove mountains. To move them out of the way. Three steps. Number one, have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Not have faith in faith, not have faith in yourself, have faith in God. So basically, the, your faith stems from God himself. But you've got to have faith in God, and God, and, and God said it, and if you believe God, you believe what he says in his word. So you believe his word. Have faith in God, number one. Number two, if you believe God, speak to the mountain. If you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe those things which you say that they shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. Where is that in the church today? I don't see it happening. You say, Pastor, while you're preaching it, did you ever experience it? Of course, many times. I've commanded storms. I've commanded snowstorms. I've commanded the wind, rainstorms, all kinds of things. I commanded tumors to be gone, and they were gone. Cancer to be gone. I spoke to a man right sitting back there that was dead. No breath, no pulse. He was totally gone. A nurse came running, told me we called 911. I said, why did you do that? Went over there, spoke to him, he came back to life. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have the power to move mountains. But you've got to speak to the mountains. Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves. Who did he talk to? The wind and the waves. Really, what he talked to, who he talked to, is the kingdom behind the wind and the waves that were trying to disrupt the disciples. 
And if something is disrupting your life, you have authority over it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then number three, believe. When you pray, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received, and you shall have it. Or as this translation said, they will be granted to you. Believe when you pray. Now somebody says, well, you know, prayer moves God. No, prayer doesn't move God. The prayer of faith will, will heal the sick. The prayer of faith will move God. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, when you pray, do your believing. So when you pray, you don't pray with a doubt. You pray with faith. If you're still doubting, don't pray until you're ready to believe. Because you're wasting your time. You're not God, wasting God's time. He doesn't hear a prayer of unbelief. He wants you to believe him. Believe him when you approach him. Believe in God, number one. Number two, speak to the mountain. Number three, when you pray, be thankful to the Lord that it is done. Amen. You say, well, I don't see it yet. doesn't matter whether you see it or you don't. We walk by faith, not by sight. Do you feel better? I don't know. It doesn't matter whether I feel better or not. God said it's done, therefore it's done. I declare the word of God. I declare the word of the Lord. I speak to the mountain to be removed. That's what it's all about. And God wants to bless you. He wants to equip you. He wants you to know that you're in charge of the situation. You don't have to cover your head with your sheets and, and, or put your head in the sand and say, alas, it's over with for me. I might as well kill myself. You don't have to do that at all. You, instead, you rise up and move the mountain out of the way and be victorious. You know, God promised us victory. He says, you are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. Why are you more than a conqueror? Because Jesus already conquered and he gave it to us for free. So what do we do about it? Nothing. We just received it freely. We are more than a conqueror. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ